All right, so today we're gonna to show off how to do a Dillon quick change assembly with the RL550B. So changing from one caliber to another. So for instance, it's set up for 45 right now and we're going to change it to nine millimeter, changing all the stuff that you need to do in the simplest possible method based on the stuff that I have from Dillon, which is the Dillon quick change assembly as well as the caliber conversion kit. First things first, um, I would highly recommend you take the primers out of the tube if you haven't already finished your entire primer tube and it's empty. In this case it is. If uh, you still have primers in here, you could simply run this back and forth, picking up individual primers and then removing them with, by your hand. And we're gonna swap the tube first. So I'm gonna remove this, take off the uh, primer alert system here. Uh, we're going to remove this knurled piece here and then pull out to the tube. So keep in mind, if you're changing something from like, if you're gonna be reloading 308 and you're changing to 45, you won't need to change this tube. It's only if you're going from a large primer to a small primer or vice versa. So in this case, we're going from a large pistol primer to a small pistol primer. So we're going to remove this tube and we are going to insert the next one. So like I said, we're doing nine millimeter. Small one is blue. And so we're going to insert that in here like so. And then you'll rotate it until you feel it actually drop in where it's supposed to, which is right there. So that means everything is lined up and you can return this knurled piece here and return your early primer warning system. All right, so next in line, since I am changing the primer tube from a large primer to a small primer, I have to change out the primer bar down here. And so we're going to take a 532nd Allen wrench and I'm gonna remove the primer box, the little drop down box here for the trash just so I don't dump it on the floor. And we're going to, one, remove this spring to where you don't have constant tension on the bar. And then we're going to remove these nuts here, or not nuts, bolts. Get those loosened up first and then you can do most of it by hand or you can use the long end of the key if you wish to. You gotta keep in mind this whole assembly is held in by these couple screws. So you'll want to make sure you don't let it fall to the ground. Now you have to raise it slightly in order to be able to have it not retain the primer bar. So primer bar removed. I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the table so I don't drop it. We're going to grab we're going to grab a new primer bar, so we're changing it to this one right here. So I find it easiest to just go ahead and line this up to where it would belong, and then lower the ram in order to actually get it lined up to where its final position is going to be, because this thing can be off-centered slightly, and then it's going to hit the edge of the primer cup every single time. So, I'm going to go ahead and raise this to get it out of the way slightly. And now once again, it's retained. And now I just have to get the thread started. All right, we're going to return this bar that I took off. Simply pulling that out. Oops. Lining it up like so. All right, so everything is returned. I just have to snug this down. Okay, so those are snugged. And now just return this spring here in order to be able to pull the primer bar back forward. Do a couple test runs here. Yep, no hangups anywhere. And like I said, if this thing is slightly crooked, sometimes you can feel it hit when the ram actually goes forward. So right here, it feels nice and smooth. So we've got the primer tube changed and the primer bar changed. Sometimes you won't have to even do that, depends on what the situation is. Next in order of operations, or at least as far as I like to do it, I'm gonna go ahead and change out the tool head up here. So this is where the quick change assembly really shines because if I take this silver piece out and I have to remove dies and then place new dies in it and adjust them all every single time I change calibers, that's a lot of time wasted, versus I can just pop a couple pins, I can change this entire setup for a different caliber. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and hold down here at the bottom, put a little bit of pressure downwards to remove this white piece here. Go ahead and swing this bar out of the way and hold on to that for future use. And now I'm going to remove these black retaining pins here. 
once again hold them for future use. Alright, so this is what a complete um, assembly will look like as far as it's got its own stand, its own locator buttons, shell plate, and tool head, and then obviously you put your dies in it to match whatever you want. This one happens to be mislabeled. So we're going to go ahead and remove this one that is set up for 45. Pull him out like so. Swap it out. Go ahead and place this entire tool head on. Slide it in the slot. Return these pins. And now that is locked in. And then you can return this now if you would like to, completely your choice, or you can keep it out of the way if you want to be able to get to this stuff easier. So we've got the tool head changed, we've got the primer tube swapped, we've got the primer bar changed. And now we're going to go ahead and change out the shell plate. So first things, we're going to raise this up. There's a single detent right here with threads on it that you have to remove. So that set screw keeps things lined up, 1 8 Allen. So you can back it out just a little bit if you want. I prefer to just remove it completely so that I don't accidentally try to lower it with it protruding slightly. Now that that is removed, you can take your Allen key that is one quarter inch and go ahead and break this loose. And I personally think it's easiest just to spin this entire unit. Now that the set screw is not holding it there, you got this like ninja star looking thing that will actually give you a decent amount of leverage. So once that's broken loose, go ahead and pull that out and set this aside for future use. Change out your shell plate. So going from this one to the one set up for nine millimeter. Careful not to knock this ball bearing down into the tube. I have done it before. In fact, I think I've done it like four times and it's kind of difficult to get it out. So go ahead and return that in. Have the ball bearing sitting in one of these circles here. And now you can return this, thread it right back on. So one other thing worth noting is this bent paperclip looking thing here that actually ejects the rounds down the ramp when they're completed, is that when you remove that, it's going to accidentally raise this up as the shell plate backs out. So you'll have to continuously push this down in order to get it in between the Ninja Star, which is the silver thing, and the shell plate itself. So that'll be something that can get kind of hung up on sometimes. So my personal preference of how to get this tightened down without um, having it too tight to where you can't move the shell holder and having it too loose to where there's a lot of wobbling back and forth on the actual plate itself is I will personally take this and tighten it down quite a bit to where I cannot move this really forward at all clockwise and I'll go ahead and back it off about a quarter of a turn and then I can feel it moving here and there's a little bit of snugness to it and that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking for because there's minimal movement up and down at this point. So now that I'm satisfied with where that's at, I'm going to take the set screw with the brass detent. I'm going to return that to the side in order to apply pressure to that main bolt going down and prevent it from clocking with the shell plate itself. Go ahead and get that snugged on. You can run a test here. Make sure that it doesn't get snug, doesn't get hung up on anything, which it doesn't. I can see that my little bent paper clip over here, which it's not actually that, but that it's not contacting on the shell plate or the Ninja Star itself, having any resistance. And now I can go ahead and return this bar, which you can adjust the uh, force in which it pulls the powder bar back by adjusting the wing nut here. And then I raise the ram slightly, and there we go. So now you can adjust the nut if you would like to. The only other step you need to do is actually change out these little locator buttons here, which will actually allow the uh, shells themselves or the casings to be in alignment with the dies. Now we'll go ahead and return the locator buttons that are of the right size to the slots here. And at this point, all you have to do is put new primers in the tube if you had to change primers.
For any of you seasoned reloaders who maybe do this kind of stuff a lot more than I do, maybe there's some little tricks or tips that you see that I didn't actually talk about. If you want to leave those in the comments, I'm sure other people will appreciate it. But that is about it for now. So until next time, gunner out. Yaw.